see if I can raise this up a little bit. I'll pitch that a lot more than I thought. Oh. Okay, that's a little bit better. I thought the uh, the rain was pretty much going to be done for the day, but uh, it come and it, it rained all night last night, um, all morning. It's just now lunchtime, but uh, it's been overcast, so I guess there's still going to be a consistent 40% chance of rain. Just brought out the, uh, the ultralight one wind shelter. This is our uh, haversack kit uh, with our wool blanket, and then we got our canteen set. I'll take an upload a video. Pretty much everything that was in the uh, haversack loadout. Uh, is in here except I added uh, the sleeping pad this time because I thought about doing uh, another debris bed and then using this poncho over top of it as the moisture barrier but I didn't want to get I mean this poncho is going to get dirty either way it don't matter so we got two ponchos with us because we wore one out here uh, it took a bit longer to uh, to get out because I ended up having to like go slow and uh, stop a lot because you know I got a full hazard sack I don't really have a, a, another way to uh, transport this fleece and so you know with this open having the wool blanket uh bandolier style over my over you know the center of uh, your core and then having the poncho on top of that because it was like mist and rain a lot now it's raining you heat up really quickly start to get things situated under here i can say i'm already uh ready to have lunch and uh, today i got this first strike ration this one's from mre mountain as well it's the last uh, mre that uh, i got from there um, and I've already opened this just because I was curious to see everything that was inside but I've not took anything out or added anything to it um, I got to go back because it's been a while since I opened it so uh, I think there's like a chicken there's a honey barbecue chicken sandwich and it says tuna lemon pepper but it seemed like there was two chickens in this I don't know if it just got packaged wrong or uh, you know what's going down there but tons and tons of stuff in here like won't be eating all of it and uh, I didn't have breakfast so I really do want lunch um, these don't have ration heaters because that's the whole point of the, these first strike uh, 24 hour uh, rations they're meant to be like everything in here is uh, stuff that soldiers can uh, just pull out pop in their mouth and uh, get you know calories energy all that good old stuff um, but i think i am going to take and go over here and build a fire i'm not going to need one for heat the the hot the, let's see the low for tonight is uh, 38 39 with this wool blanket, this fleece, um, and this, and I'll take my poncho, uh, this poncho, and then drape it over the front, so that'll help hold heat in. And I got that sleeping pad to keep me off the ground, so that'll be a walk in the park, as long as I can keep everything relatively dry. And then we do have a, a little camp craft uh, that we're gonna be doing. Um, this big king-size gray wool blanket, it's got a hole in it, and uh, it happened uh, a few outings back, whenever we use uh, the canvas tarp, the brainstorm whenever he's like working on that hole some um i didn't notice till i got it back to the house but there's a hole about that big in it and i'm pretty sure i could be wrong but uh like it wasn't there i know for a fact the hole wasn't in it um when i first set up camp and there was really no way because of the way i was transported it could have got hung and i was wasn't like doing any extreme bushwhacking because the trail that i've got to that place is pretty well established so I'm thinking that that night while I was sleeping, uh, like a little bush mouse or something actually come along and, you know, nibbled a hole in it, took it away for nest material or something. Um, that's the only thing I can think of because there's nothing else that would have uh, been able to create a hole like this. So we got our uh, sewing kit, camp craft outdoor canvas stuff. And I'm, like, I'm really glad that I went ahead and went with the wax canvas because it repels water. And then, you know, the stuff I have in here is... Uh, going to remain dry as long as it's just uh like a, a light rain like this so this is i think one of the i think it's coglins is how you pronounce it the uh sewing kit i've carried this thing around uh, surprisingly the top is not shattered because i've had two of these before um but i've managed to pack them in a way well that one just cracked now but it's not shattered on me so uh we're going to attempt to use this to repair uh, the hole in our wool blanket i could have done it at home but i think it's good to get these little uh these little things that it seems like you always carry and never really use out and just see how uh, how it performs in the field because there's tons of different colors of thread in this. Um, so it's probably going to take one or two of those uh, things because there's not much like, there's not much of each color. 
Uh, I think it'd be better off just having just one color or uh, if they had to spice it up, maybe three. Um, but there's plenty of needles. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not a seamstress, but I think we can get the job done with that. Get everything dry under here. I can take my wool blanket, lay it out, set, we can set on it. We'll find that hole because this is a king size wool blanket. So it's, you know, obviously one that you don't want to uh, have in disrepair. Uh, we'll find that hole and we should, we'll still be able to take and probably sit on the wool blanket. And then I'll try to bring you guys in real close and we'll get a close up of that. So just anytime it's raining uh, and using a shelter like this, you know, you, it makes filming a lot more difficult. But you gotta, you gotta love a challenge, you know. So if I didn't get to where I was going with the fire thing, I'm gonna take uh, the little, the bottom pan to that uh, titanium mess kit, and we'll throw up, we'll throw her thing in it, and then heat it up. The blanket just got a little damp. Well, I hang, like I had it hanging up. I tried to get this shelter set up as quickly as possible. Bear skin fleece repels water, but it's not, you know, waterproof, so I don't want to get it too saturated. So I have to slip back underneath the poncho and figure out what we're doing there. Open up our nifty little fire kit here, and I guess we'll just uh, we'll go one of these little tumbleweed things. Yeah, I've been in this area before, and I think there might still be a little, like a tiny little fire pit. I'm not gonna waste time doing a big one. I was messing around. Uh, I got a new, I got a new kniff. I think I showed a close up of it there a second ago, because I used it to go get that stick that's stuck in the ground because like what i do to cover you guys is i got a mini little umbrella I, i'll find like a stick and i'll take and zip tie the umbrella to the stick and then y'all go under it and you don't get a, you don't get water in your ears or in my equipment yeah i really i really like this one wind uh half shelter i mean you guys if you've been around for a while you've seen it you use it a lot because i mean <clears throat> ginormous cover area really small profile I mean, I'm thinking about like this summer um, for hammock camp and stuff. They they make really good stuff, so I'll probably see about getting one of their hammocks and uh, one of their larger steel nylon tarps. Because I just it's really it's really amazing how how compact steel nylon packs down to. It's not supposed to come any like torrential downpour, just uh, this at most. And then I hope hopefully it don't get too breezy because. I'm not really feeling like dealing with wind. This ground right here is so rocky that I'm worried if it gets if it gets too windy, it'll pull out the uh, it'll pull out the stakes. Okay, even the low hanging stuff is completely saturated. Like you can squeeze that, and water just drips off of it. So I'm gonna I hope that one of these will uh, be enough to do the trick. But if not, then no biggie we got plenty of stuff with us and i'm not trying to do any hardcore skill testing right now because i'm hungry and I'm here to have a good wet time you know need to kind of get as much of this on top of that as i can right now so that that heat can start drying it out god dang it bro it, even this dead stuff when it gets wet it just revitalizes that springiness in the wood. So I didn't. I, I keep forgetting to restock my. Uh, I still got a, a crap ton of my homemade fire starters that we did, but they don't really do you no good if you don't remember to put them back in your bag. It's fighting for it. These larger pieces, I think you can get all this wet bark off because that's where most of that moisture is trapped, anyways. I think we're good to go now. Uh, it's tapered off again. 
leave the tripod over there. Hopefully it doesn't kick back up while we do this. Try not to slice into anything here at the top. Makes you feel like Christmas. So uh, here we got the uh, honey barbecued chicken and bread. So that's what I'm going to eat later. Cracker, filled French toast. That's like something I guess would be a breakfast item or dessert. Um, this is chicken breast, filet, garlic, and herbs. So see, I think that is what was supposed to be the tuna um, thing it mentioned. And it's got this bag that you can use to put trash or put your items back in chocolate chip toaster pastry nut raisin mix we'll probably eat that with a weird thing first strike energy bar that'll probably be our dessert for now you got two drink mixes one's a protein shake oh and then there's this accessory packet it's got this caffeinated gum in it i mean this thing really is all about getting you Energy levels buzzing. There's our gum. Ooh, man, I've never okay, I've never seen mayonnaise in one before. Peanut butter, and I'm assuming this is jam. This is mixed berry energy gel. A lot of first there. The accessory pack, it's pretty normal. You got matches. Uh, this one just has a bunch of extra moist towelettes in it. But we're out there. We'll have to get our spoon out. Then we'll open up this. Get to the pan. I didn't, um, one thing that's not in my haversack kit that normally is, is my titanium uh, utensils, but I left them out uh, on purpose, just because I knew there was, where I already opened this, I knew there was a spoon, it was good, and I just have used them, and they're still dirty in the uh, in the sink, so. Just throw everything out here, make a big old mess, that's how we, that's how we roll, okay, so where, so there's that, so yeah, it's just a, Chicken breast fillet, garlic and herb. Okay, sounds simple enough, and it's ready. It's ready to go and pop in. Like you could just bring that bad boy out, eat it like a energy bar. But we're oh, I don't want all that juice. In. Well, maybe I do. Well. So, you sure you get on a solid surface. It is nice and tender, but you know, who knows how long exactly. Well, I guess you could look at the date on the outside of that to get an idea of when it was uh, packaged and everything. Okay, well, there's that. Let's get a bite of it without. Not bad at all. Wish you had some hot sauce, but let's get it over here and heat it up. I don't know if we'll do the barbecue thing the same way or not. I might have to go drink up my gloves. <laughs> Whoa, right in the eyeballs. See, I'm already, I've started using that bottom, uh, that bottom cup a lot more than I thought I ever would. For stuff like this, it's super handy. This bulk can titanium mess kit's been phenomenal. I'm actually, and I got one, I'm going to be doing a giveaway uh, of a brand new, uh, like a brand new one of these mess kits, so stay tuned for that. I'm just trying to, to decide which video I want to do the announcement and like the rules and everything. Um, but it, it's in collaboration with Vault Can. They sent it over uh, a month and a half, two months ago. Um, and I wanted to wait till the new year, and I got to double check with him, like with the guy that owns Vault Can, and see like you know what his uh, think. <laughs> Most likely it'll be you know make sure you're sub to my channel, um, go like follow their Instagram. Like the, the, the contest is not started, but just giving you guys some heads up. Um, follow my channel, get uh, at least one or two, I don't I haven't picked a number. I was going to say one to three people to uh, follow the, to sub to the channel. Just follow Vault Can on Instagram and uh, my Instagram as well. Leave a comment in the do jig, and then I'll let the contest probably run for about a month. And then uh, I'll put everybody's thing in a random name picker, and we'll 
auto generate something and then somebody will get a nice um, $170 titanium mess kit set. There we go. Well, I got all that stuff strode out. Can't start to sprinkle again. It's just too cramped under there. So we're just going to stand up and enjoy. You can take and use a poncho and this thing don't break. I wish one of those packets in that was a thing of hot sauce. Alright, I'm gonna eat this and we'll try to decide what we're gonna do next. We're gonna hit up the nut raisin mix. Oh yes, yeah, is our good old M&M friends. Let's not eat that. Like I said, I'm gonna get all this trash and stuff up right there. I'll just throw it in the pile for the time being. You got almonds, cashews, M&M's, raisins. It's just a perfect flavor combination. The rain is starting to pick back up again. I'll have to go get that umbrella. So the last thing I'm going to have right now for a quick lunch is this uh, teriyaki uh, beef stick. Apparently made by Grayson Natural Farm. And it's only about two o'clock now, but where we're in the woods and it's extremely overcast, it will get dark in here a lot quicker. So I want to go ahead and get the uh, the wool blanket situated or attempt to. It's not like the hole's big enough to where it wouldn't be functional, but I don't want to continue to roll around in it and make the hole bigger. I just got bigger. I'm gonna set this up to where y'all can see what I'm doing. Like I might just end up kind of have to show you the before and after of it. This face is too cramped to really get into any exact how-to stuff plus i'm not a seamstress but i just i know a couple methods of sewing so i'm gonna eat this get this cleared out of the way and then we'll we'll do that <clears throat> okay yeah so like right here is what the the little sewing kit looks like we got a couple needles safety pins extra buttons and then just a bunch of different colors of thread which is unnecessary but uh we'll see what we can do i'll try to use uh, either that dark navy or that black thread um it's like there's multiple of these spools i they've just been better off having you know a larger uh singular piece right there it is that hole right there is way too big to just have like hung on something and tore it just looks like something gnawed that out and um depending on where you're at you might consider you know like a like moss or something but it was pouring the rain that day there was nothing under there before i went to bed so i think that right there uh this right here is almost dead center in the back so it would have been against the bottom portion uh of that uh tarp setup where it was really dry a mouse um could have easily meandered up underneath there in the middle of the night and you know chowed down this is a king size blanket you know it's, there's a lot of overhang on the back end um and so if it had been where i got up once to go pee and got just underneath the front layer and there was a lot of this kind of wadded up in the back of the shelter that right there is probably uh that's what i'd put my money on now, where this has like a decently large circumference, you'd probably, it'd probably best to patch it, but I want to just kind of approach this as a field repair, um, mainly just as an experiment. So we're just going to, we're going to pinch it up and I'm going to attempt to, uh, to get everything sewed together. So I'm not start pouring cause it's going to be, it'd be really hard to, uh, to do this kind of hunched over underneath this, but if that's what we got to do, that's just the reality of things i'm still needing it and since we don't have like a really good flat work area i would love to go over to that log behind us but it's soaking wet so most of this stuff isn't really necessary i'm probably gonna like build a custom little sewing kit a thimble is not a bad idea but i don't use a thimble i think that this is a uh, a needle threader i'm gonna see if i'm skilled enough to do it by eye. You gotta have munchkin hands to do this. There's that black cord, I think. Yeah, because I feel like the, the tensile strength of this is not that great. Get in there. You got dang heifer, get in there. Jesus, okay. I think you're supposed to like 
I think you stick that through there. Hopefully I'm somewhat in view with this, but I feel like the frustration is going to get to a point to where. Okay. So you get that there, pull that through. Nice. Oh, so now pull a good old section through because we'll do a double strand. We'll probably have to, you know, pull it back a couple times because you don't want to have to, you don't want to have too much to where it's like impossible to, uh, you know, you have to, you keep having to keep track of where you're at. Yep, so one strand of black is doubled over like we're going to be doing is, let's see, I got to make sure I got my double strand even at the end. Okay, that's close enough. Then I like to take and tie a knot. But one thing I am lucky about right now is it's like 47 degrees or like not even be about 50 degrees. So if it was any colder, this would be a million times more difficult so I'm trying to find the best that right there seems like the closest seam that i'm going to be able to get so i'm not going to where this is wool i'm going to do this yeah i'm sorry if any uh master seamstress are out there i, I don't know all the proper terminology so did i get through there or no nope okay so then i'm going to take and come back here pass through How'd that get wadded up? Yeah, okay, well. We got a nice little wad of cordage of a thread right there that we're going to have to just let exist, I guess. Okay. And then I'm just going to uh, pass through. Oh, if I don't poke a hole in my shelter, that wouldn't be good. Let's bring it up a little bit closer here. Okay, so there we go. Um, I wanted to try to get across this whole length with the amount, uh, just like this one piece of thread, which I was able to do. Um, and that right there has actually turned out a lot better considering the abnormal um, shape of that hole. So that closed up really nicely. Um, I'm gonna, and then like for my final thing, what I do is on the corner, I just like to run it through a bunch of times then take, you know, do a couple quick little loops, passing it through itself. And what I'll do is, is after tonight's trip and when I get home, I will uh, run another much tighter pass over it, probably with a sewing machine, just uh, for, you know, sure durability. But as far as, uh, you know, taking and using a repair kit in the field, in like, you know, this is a very cramped working space. Um... I'll take that all day. Just do a couple more. This is excessive, but why not? And I mean, you could even take and just start working your way back the other direction, but there's not enough to uh, finish going the length way, so I'm going to just call this good for now. And so while well, we got the needle on here, I'll tie us a knot. We'll cinch that down there. Since we got them, we'll use these little fun-sized scissors, and that'll be good to go. And then now, we'll see if we can get this stuff back in here somewhat like it was. You know, in my opinion, it's better to carry around a uh, an old lady that's been sewing for 40 years. But uh, if you can't do that, something like this will uh, will suffice. Um, and, well, I'm going to do that and save this applesauce for later because... I might just go ahead and eat this first strike energy bar. I don't really like these that much because they're just so god dang chewy and oh my I'm gonna just drop everything. I'm gonna eat the forest floor before the day's over. Oh and it's so sticky. I hate sticky. These are really stick to your teeth. 
You can take your time chewing them. Got a tried and true Gear Doctor pad. Actually, just um, I just got a new Gear Doctor pad. Uh, it's one of the, like self-inflating ones, so it's got like some foam inside, and then it also blows up. Um, it's not huge, but it is bigger than this one, so that wasn't really an option. I was just really happy I was able to squeeze this into uh, into the haversack. I mean that Camp Craft Outdoors haversack you can fit a lot in it. I mean, just look at all the stuff that we brought out. There was still room to slide. Because I just got a folding saw, had a knife in there. First strike ration, uh, the one win thing, a poncho. Um, it just like I said, just go and look at the haversack loadout and you'll, you'll know an impressive amount. Oh, because then the other extra thing too is I went ahead and brought the flex tail pump. Oh, you can do bushcraft and still embrace some modern technology. Alrighty, before it gets too dark, I'm ready to uh, try that chicken, honey barbecue chicken. I'm not going to heat this one up just because uh, right now the rain has pretty much ceased. There's a little bit of a, of a mist and it's getting foggy, um, but I don't see the point in starting a fire with this. I, I don't know what it is going to look like exactly, so it might be kind of hard to uh, heat up evenly. And it's better to have something like that cool than just lukewarm. This is in barbecue, you do dig that. Yeah, barbecue corn nuggets. Took and had that zapple sauce a little bit ago. And probably eat that peanut butter cracker here in a bit. Or put that peanut butter on a cracker. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, I mean, this is just like one self, uh, self-contained, self almost like a bread meat pie. I just hope that the bread's not like fully absorbed all the like barbecue qualities on it, the barbecue sauce. Yeah, that right there, that's a lot more bread than um, barbecue chicken. I was able to take and chill out underneath my uh, underneath my shelter long enough to mostly get dried off my kneecaps where these pads are and stuff. It's a bit damp and so it's kind of like the back of my, or well, the back of my back. Yeah, this doesn't taste bad at all. It, it just almost doesn't even have much of a taste. It's just kind of like plain bread, even with the barbecue chicken. Now this might be horrible, but I'm gonna take a little bit of this mayonnaise and squeeze out on this because I'm known as a mayonnaise fiend, but I don't think it's gonna do much for this. Plus this is fat-free mayonnaise. Yeah, I mean, this isn't something that I would go for, but that does really help enhance it a bit what would have been what I really should have done was take that mayonnaise and once I had that chicken pulled apart and warmed up that would have been 10 out of 10 more flavorful and stuff a packet of whatever barbecue sauce the honey sweet honey uh, barbecue sauce that this chicken is uh, marinated in to just kind of help moisten it up even more and and help with the dryness of this processed bread. Well, it's the bread's not dry, but um, until you've had this, uh, you know, shelf stable bread, um, it's kind of hard to explain. So I'm pretty much just gonna eat the filling out of this. And these pieces, like the around the edges, it's just bread. I'm just gonna track them a squirrel or something. We'll get them. Yeah, and I had these uh, barbecue corn nuggets and like a older MRE. I don't know if they've changed any. Cause this is a newer well okay guys for some reason i think stopped recording i was um i just finished the peanut butter and crackers putting all the trash in this bag i don't know if it heard the first part of what i said but like i, I wasn't really i wasn't really feeling 
anything sweet. I mean, I had that zapple sauce, and that was good. We got our uh, field pastry. If I eat breakfast in the morning, I eat that. I'm just not sure if I will. Just depends. Most of the time in the mornings, I'm not really in the mood for anything sweet. But this is the chocolate chip poster pastry. And I don't even know what these look like. Um, so I'm just curious. We'll finish this off as a dessert. And we still got both of our drink mixes. And that peanut butter <clears throat> crackers will glue your mouth shut. I gotta say, this thing does not look good. Could be wrong, no. Okay, so that is what they call a chocolate chip toaster pastry. No, wait, this might just be like cookie dough. It tastes a lot better than it looks. Well, guys, I'm gonna finish this and I'm gonna make sure I got all my trash up. That way in the morning, because I'm not 100% sure what the weather's going to do. Like right now, it's still really misty and overcast. It's very still, though, so I don't think we're going to have any wind. All right, guys. Well, it is, uh, oh, it is that time. I'm going to double check. All this looks good. Air pad still inflated. Um, I didn't bring my pillow, but, uh, I'm not going to have my head on my haversack, but I'm just going to take the upper end of this and just kind of rest it up on top there, and that gives it, that it'll be plenty of uh, incline for neck support. I'm over here with this poncho, and this poncho, depending on what the weather does, I can always slide it up along and down. Um, you know, if it, if it did come a harder rain, I need to prevent any uh, splashback, and I could also take and pull this thing out long ways, and if I need to get out and tie it and stake it down, I can do that as well. So I'll get both my boots today. I'll pull this guy off, tuck it inside my boot, get in a nice uh, mended oh, blanket. Oh. I, think, I think I'm laying, I think I'm sleeping flat tonight. Oh, I'll get the feet tucked in. Oh. Well, anyways, guys, I'm going to take, relax, probably put my headphones in, listen to something for a bit, um, look up the weather, double check it, you know, just check a live radar, and then, and then hit the hay. So, with that said, oh, I will talk to y'all beautiful people in the morning. So, good night. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> oh. Good morning, guys. <clears throat> Last night uh, it was another uh, very nice, uh, relaxing, uh, relaxing night. It seems like the uh, the hole we patched on this bad boy uh, held up just fine. We didn't do a whole lot of tossing and turning. I just took and kind of leaned uh, my haversack up a bit, just to get a little bit of elevation for the uh, for the, like for my head because I didn't bring the uh, pillow with me. It probably would have fit. It would have fit. <sighs> Inside the haversack, no problem, but, but yeah, it didn't, uh, it's just like a bit of mist and rain and stuff last night. I kind of had this pulled over more in this front area. Um, and then, but my boots just tucked in right there and everything was good. The only, uh, I guess really the only negative, which it, went, it didn't cause any type of problem, is uh, there was, I don't know, somewhat just like 10 to 15 piss ants on this top area right here. I didn't have any on my pad or any crawling on me, but I think just some some juice or something sweet from uh, the MRE must have kind of got rubbed on um, this part of my poncho or something. But luckily, it wasn't, you know, like where it got cold and everything last night that, uh, that would have slowed them down anyways for all i know they probably just started being active um sometime this morning but where there's anything remotely sweet or like that to eat they'll find a way like now i took and just run my hand along and smashed them and now i see just one more right there still got that uh that pastry thing uh from the mre but uh, i don't think i'm gonna 
to eat it this morning, like eating breakfast. So I'm probably just going to uh, make sure I got everything thing back the way I got all my trash and stuff and just get packed up. Like this shelter, it's really easy because you know you just pull it down, stuff it in the sack, and I just normally drape it out somewhere, um, let it dry out. So you guys always really appreciate you taking the time to hang out, watch the video. Uh, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, share the channel video with your friends. Uh, be on the lookout for that giveaway coming up. Uh, I'll have that in the video title whenever it's first uh, mentioned or announced. You know, uh, check the links uh, in the description if you're interested in the gear. It's not affiliate, non-sponsored, just uh, links to some of the stuff that I use. Uh, links to my other two YouTube channels if y'all check them out and uh, please hit me up in the comment section thoughts opinions uh, suggestions all of that good old stuff and until the next one guys adios